Um, but you can shit. I don't even know where I was now. Well, we were talking about you know censorship and algorithms. You're saying everyone at the yeah, place has the same ideology. If you have a departmental memo that says this, uh, we considered this misinformation now, and that's really been the thing the last couple of years is that anything, uh, you know, the the state doesn't like, or pharma doesn't like or the war machine doesn't like that's all misinformation now it doesn't matter if it's actually accurate it's just misinformation so it put into that context if you can say to your team hey this is misinformation write an algorithm that blanket targets these words and then pump the brakes on whoever's using them it'll do that across the board and that's why you see facebook posts from the actual cdc getting tagged with misinformation yeah that's why you see stuff on instagram where people are like all i did was show a new york post headline and it got <laughs> yeah. you know that's I'm, because that's exactly what that is if you program the algorithm to be kind of a blind attack dog it's going to bite whoever walks by it yeah so I'm, a, I'm actually on board with all that, but I, I feel like there's a, like the idea that everyone who works at these companies, especially like engineers, like think about, you know, Silicon Valley has a, obviously like a vibe, but if you go it, take like a, you know, let's say a thousand engineers, like, you know, the type of guy that en engineers, like, mm -hmm. I bet you half of those guys are like low key watching Andrew Tate on their off time. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, you know what I mean? The type of guy who like moved from India to be like engineer at Silicon Valley or whatever. Like it's not, you know, the, the all hundred thousand engineers sure. are just like totally wrapped up. That's more. That's more the people that it benefits them. The engineers is probably the least people that have to pay attention to this like politics nonsense. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can, so I feel like uh, there'd be more. Like I, I, there's always like kind of whistleblowers, but as far as the actual we're going to set it to just have people slowly be unfollowed from you. I feel like that's one that you'd have like a James Damore like leaking it out. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like there've been over the years, people who have come forward, Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower. What were his big who, ones? Yeah. You know, um, uh, where, where he was like, well, it was more the culture of, he the, was showing the, he was showing the trip switches that and the way yeah. a person can go and get an account suspended or whatnot, but they were all there. They were all in a, you know, a program and they limited to the in engineers who knew this stuff, the limited to the people who write these algorithms, but he was exposing these things that like, look, this is how you get somebody's account suspended. Uh, he was specifically talking about Tulsi Gabbard, and he explained exactly how her account got suspended coming out of a debate where she had just destroyed, uh, what was his name? The the first before Kamala, the, the white dude, uh, she destroyed him, uh, and people were looking up her name, and all of a sudden her account got suspended because, because it, it was a tripwire in there, which a person can go and activate that an engineer has set a bug in there, and uh, he exposed that. He was exposing a lot of those things. Well, if you... So, it is interesting the so the trip wires that kind of makes sense yeah. but the when they give someone the like what happened yesterday whenever they just delete everyone at the same like whenever when with andrew tay when they go we'll delete them off youtube you know instagram facebook twitter i guess the non-nefarious version is like someone did it first and then the other places are like okay it's we can just do this now the but i wonder the extent to which behind like i'm obviously in my mind, I'm not against the idea that, yeah, there's probably some, like, conspiratorial aspects, but I'm always like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, when, uh, is there, you know, the ADL and these other groups kind of, are they lobbying everyone, and then they kind of get to go back to their content tact to be like, look, Facebook and Instagram did it, like, you know what I mean? Well, or is, you know, what? How, do, how does that actually shake down? Like, you know what I mean? If this was actual movie and these were characters, what does that look like the actual day that, you know, these Alex Jones got deleted from everything? I mean, there's 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 a number of different scenarios. The guy who was just on here with us, uh, 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 Bald Ryan, for, for <laughs> intent for the show, um, he's like Google, one of Google's most wanted. Like he cannot have a YouTube channel. He cannot have uh, it. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't his his Google search results are heavily manipulated. He was banned off of LinkedIn. Um, 
we're yeah. both kicked off of Patreon. Yeah. Uh, they're like shut down his PayPal. Uh, I'm demonetized yeah. on YouTube, and so this so is am I. So before. Yeah, yeah, so is he now for almost almost two almost years. I'm demonetized um, on a few, but not YouTube yet. And then uh, yeah. uh, this is something that both. <laughs> well, I just post I, sketches mostly on my channel, but and they're fucking rad, by yeah. the way. Sure. Um, the this is something that's happened to both Ryan and I over the years. That uh, a couple of different things like brought it to our attention but google has rolled back or youtube has rolled back view counts to make it look like less people are watching it we've got screenshots over the years of that uh of a a, a particular video having a lot of traction yeah. and then you'll go back a couple of days later and it'll be like three thousand views less it's got 400 likes but 300 views explain that we've been on live streams where it says there's zero people in the chat and yet it's got could, like a could those be glitches well, that's There's no the thing. such There's thing no such as thing as a glitch. glitch. It's just somebody manipulating the computer or a program to do something. What, what do you mean by there. that? Like, There's no such thing where it's the computer just messing up on its own. But it's you've never like, had a glitch like on your end with on a program that wasn't having someone man it at the other side? The, if you talk to any computer programmer under the sun. The, they will tell you that there's no such thing. Okay, here's a here's a perfect example. Forever when you were a YouTuber, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Please, the, no. By all means. Yeah. When I was, uh, like, forever with YouTube, they had a glitch where uh, your views would say 304 forever, and then they would jump to, like, 5,000, right? And it would kind of do that on everyone's channel. So there was no, like, reason why they would program that in, I don't think. It was just kind of, like, for some... Or maybe okay. there is a reason. Well, you said I don't couple, think. It. Couple questions. Couple questions. First question: What year? Uh, ten years ago, probably. Ten years. Ooh, so, uh, like right leading up to GamerGate kind of thing. Be be. Let's just or way like before. Yeah, before. Er, earlier YouTube. Yeah, I'm just okay. thinking the original thing that I think is thought was a glitch. But, um, oh here here's a a weird one. When you were in YouTube your like youtube studio the views are higher than uh the views in your non-youtube studio so sometimes right. it counts different right so sometimes basically every time you look at a youtube video it's always like three hours ago's views right so it's yeah. very very no like it can if your video is pop and sometimes it's more right so if it can be if your video is popping off that uh if the last three hours were hot having your light count higher than your other count i mean that's why you'll see po people post screenshots a lot of times being like you know look at that like light count and you're just like yeah because your likes are up to date and your views are not so it's like looks like you have a hot count but and we're i mean we're talking real time though during a live stream where it's showing on youtube that there's zero viewers on the front page yeah or on whatever page where it's showing on your page in studio that there's zero viewers that there's comments in the chat and there's likes but but i bet you are yeah, yeah. everywhere on youtube it's showing zero. but what would be the i guess with other things i'm like i understand the benefit of like like some of them it's obvious i mean you don't even really like you don't even need to be into like conspiracies to know that like on TikTok, it's the minute you start getting uh you know uh strikes or the mint on instagram like the shadow ban is like that's like part of the algorithm in a way that's not even mm -hmm. like debated yeah. really there's yeah. like you know if you post something and it gets taken down like your next posts will have be like stilted or whatever the word is forever yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah, the, but then, yeah yeah but like what's the functional so that's obvious or whatever but like what's the functional <laughs> reason for you go hey but we're gonna show your view count like 20 percent lower like what, what's the functional like reason for that there there's a number of different things and and the most i think the most simple explanation uh if you want to reduce it down to narrative control as a, a goal for what youtube is in general and you can see that in the number of people that they've kicked off and the number of rules they've implemented in terms of what you can say and what you can't say what tags you can use that kind of thing they're very clearly trying to present a narrative of the world um then it's frustration because almost everybody that does this they don't have uh they don't have they're doing it you know out of their house I started out shooting the show on my deck in the Santa Cruz mountains, you know, and now we're in Vegas and we have a studio. Nice. So it's different. But, um, um, and by the way, if you're doing skank fest, you're welcome to come through and hang out in the studio too. Nice uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're we're gonna we're gonna try and get a handful of people in for that um but uh I, they just it's a lot of money that you put into it or a lot of time that you put into it most people don't make money from this so if you can frustrate people that are talking outside of the narrative if you can just make it hard enough to where they throw their hands up that's all you really have to do to get most people to quit we were talking about this at the beginning of the show if you're part of the participation trophy instant gratification generation if you experience enough glitches if you have enough frustrations you're just gonna be like fuck it you know what man i'm gonna talk about video games or i'm just gonna go play video or you games. start questioning what you're doing with your fucking life too right like this fucking sucks what am i doing with that my seems life? like sa- okay. so, yeah yeah and i'm not i actually have i don't know so i uh, you know i mean i'm not like disagreeing with you but that does seem like like passive aggressive uh censorship <laughs> yeah. like that's how a girl would censor you know what i mean well, it's like, you're yeah. making, like just in order to be on youtube you have to self-censor in the first place or you yeah. get stuck down so in order to play you kind of have to engage in that self-censorship in but the- they also have the ability to just be like okay let's like keep an eye on that guy as soon as he starts like really bothering him we'll just make him disappear so it's like of course you know what i mean they have all these other tools but like yeah. it's possible but yeah. what I'll, I'll give you an example. We have a, a friend. It, uh, he's a good buddy of mine. His name's Gordon Dimmick. He lives in the UK and um, citizen journalist uh, got really involved when uh, Julian Assange got dragged out of the embassy in 2019 and thrown into prison. And so he started uh, reporting on like free speech and free press and, and the Julian Assange case really heavy. He took off. He got some traction. He went from 600 subscribers to almost 100,000 subscribers in a couple of months. And YouTube said no. They knocked him down to 20,000 subscribers and have not let him gain one in four years. (laughs) That's crazy. Part of those algorithms will also say, like, if you haven't visited the, the actual page of that person, like in a couple weeks or a month, they'll take you to unsubscribe you. Even if you're sharing that person's content, but if you don't actually go, because that's the thing I realize, like, you know, I don't go to Fiorella's page, my other business partner. I don't go to Steve's actual page. I see his content. I see a tweet in a thread and I'll share it. I don't actually go to his page. And that's why I was constantly I thought maybe I was being unfollowed. I've been unfollowed from him three times. I've been followed from my other uh, business partner who I have a show with for five years now, three times. It's like it, it happens all the time. And that's the whole game. Less views, less shares less donations less finances less chance of making a living doing this i gotta go do other things right so, yeah I mean, that is part of the whole game when you see those low views and you have more likes it's part of that algorithm that you've been flagged and let's not forget that those algorithms are algorithms and they might be used by the tech companies to keep people you know to keep them from having any accountability but no i'm having were written by a person think of it think of it like think of it like trying to make it in comedy okay Uh, And that's what trying to put, you know, any sort of decent content out on the Internet is, especially if you're doing what we do, which is way outside of pocket. Um, Most comics, what's the what's the uh, seven to 12 years before you're actually doing fucking anything to the point where you're making any kind of money for most comics? Most. I think for most comics is 80 to infinity years. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and how much shit do you have to eat? And how many nights do you have to be broke? And how many times do you question what the fuck you're doing? Just because there's already a system in place where there's a pass-fail network, where there's already different clicks that are going to allow you to achieve different levels of success. And all of that existed before you got there. That not as much anymore, but yeah. Not as much anymore, and thank fucking God, and I hope we can get into some of that a little bit too but um and that's what in in a lot of ways no i I see what you're saying like there's a you know there's a general pathway and then they i think that is a a good way to put it and like in a lot of ways like there's a lot of algorithms like tiktok and stuff and that's why when certain people are looking for ways to hack the algorithm you know what i mean where you're just like hey what if i just have ten thousand people post so i'm kind of always thinking in that way it's like how do i how do i beat this system i've got one question that i was thinking about lately that i feel like the like especially people that are actually kicked off a lot of the platforms do you think that conservatives actually care about free speech or is that sort of like an aesthetic that they use because it's like a a a funner fight like it feels like sometimes it's like a fun like 
Right? Yeah, okay. There they you care go. about speech that's important to them. If you ever watch the hearings when they call the masters of the universe, the Zuckerbergs, the dude from Google, the Jack Dorsey's there, they're, they're concerned about the speeches being censored. They want to censor other speech from China, Iran. Yeah. So I don't think they really care about no, it. No, they don't, they right? They, about, you know. Yeah. That's why I feel like sometimes these are, you know, fun to talk about, but there's such, like, no one actually cares. Like, even, like, comedy, if you just even remove the free speech, you go, comedy is like just a tool that other people will use in their fights because it's you know like the truth is like if you're a conservative it's like cooler to say i'm fighting for like this comedian than i'm fighting for abortions like you know what i mean like the truth is that message will be more well received so yeah. but at the end of the day you're just like w once if it actually push comes to shove you go watch them like kind of use those fights to get any power and you go what would and then watch what they use it on it's never ever like you know uh it's you know what i mean they never actually at the end of the day make any rules uh or like push for anything that would actually help that fight so it's kind of like you're on your own to some degree you know what i mean that's why it's like Just the only th noise. Yeah. yeah the only thing you can really do is try to shield yourself and like i guess you guys found like alternate platforms like you try to find a way to make it work for yourself because I mean, there's a benefit to, I guess, complaining or like airing your gripes when you're a public figure because it's something to talk about. But at the end of the day, like no one gives a shit about your thing. <laughs> right. Well, and, and and less you and less you put in I, some significant time to make that investment worthwhile for however, you know, for however people see it. We had to adopt an entire different like revenue structure where this is a value for value system we don't have any advertisers we don't have any sponsors <laughs> it's just person to person if people dig what they can what we're doing there's a bunch of different ways they can contribute directly and that's how the show goes uh, and then that way we not only do we not have influence from uh, you know platform advertiser anything like that nobody can boycott the individual producer of the show yeah 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 and, and so like who are you boycotting to yeah yeah it's just right? us talking to our fans and they don't Fuck like you kevin in wisconsin specifically you know <laughs> like i don't i'm not gonna go to your muffler shop yeah 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 boy got a guy for like, <laughs> nobody's fucking worried about that you know it's uh, there's um well let's let let's do this because i think that the uh the way that people are getting comedy out now over the last couple of years um the lockdown specifically i think really changed the way the the comedy works uh for the better um because brother it was starting to suck like a lot <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean and, and i think that the last couple of years have really allowed for people to to question <laughs> how shit works because of what they directly experience especially with you know the way the comedy clubs shut the fuck down said no i know a bunch of people had to go and perform in a field in pennsylvania for a while like that the, which i is cool you know um i think they they screwed up people's incentive structures that which would, probably wasn't good for them like the truth is where you go everyone always has something to say like if you go someone who works at a company like he's got a lot to say about his boss but it's like his incentives are to not say it you know what i mean so there's a lot of people that were in this industry structure or at least you know are going to dabble in and out of the industry structure where you're like incentive is to not call this stuff out and it's sometimes that make does make sense where you're like hey if i got into this game to like make movies or whatever i, I might have something to say about the state of culture but like really you know, I spent the last 20 years trying to be a filmmaker and write scripts and screenplays. And like, that's really what I want to do. It's like, if it, if it's going to just hurt me, like I'm not going to get sidetracked with like arguing about like who's going to be president. You know what I mean? Right. But the, once they sort of, uh, once they sort of took away any incentive. So if they're like, Hey, you guys are basically not going to be in the industry. Anyone who says anything spicy. And it was like, all right, well now that that's done, like, I guess I'll say whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what do you, I mean, let me ask you a question right now, because I, this is like a new dawn, a new day for a lot of comedians. And I know a lot of comedians in this business. And I talk about this business, what we're doing here and stuff. I mean, obviously, I know you still look at yourself as a comedian, but the type of, you know, uh, you know, bitch you're doing now, they, they really hit home. They're really serious about what's going on. I think the best I, bits always have. Yeah. 
But I mean, it has to feel different in this time, especially with COVID that just happened and what who you're speaking out against right now. And, you know, I mean, the stakes are way much higher. Don't you agree? I mean, I go back and forth on that. Like uh, sometimes I'm like, this is very different. And sometimes I'm like, maybe just the period before was a little different. And every there's always a version of this in history. Like there's other times, you know, you look back and you go, yeah, there's like a war going on. and Everyone's getting drafted to go die. And like, you know what I mean? The stakes of that were probably pretty high where you're like right now we're. We're talking about stuff, but the, at times you're like, hey, I'm talking about whether my brother gets like forced to go die or you know what I mean? So I'm sure there's other times in history that were like pretty aggressively high stakes. But the uh, this I think that like there's there's two parts. Some of it is like you're always going to whenever you the best comedy comes from when you have uh I think Peter Thiel said this too, but it's like when you aggressively agree with something that like the majority dis disagrees with. And then part of it is your like hand is forced. Like if you look at, you know, the transgender stuff where they're like, hey, this is the new things we think and you're not allowed to talk about it. It's like <laughs> no one, dude, no one used to really talk about like transgender stuff. Whereas now if you go look at every major special, even like super popular Netflix specials, whether it's Ricky Gervais, like, you know, Louis, uh, mm. Chappelle, you go, is there anyone who didn't talk about that now? It was like, they, you know, it's really, it's like someone that's in the, in the room that's like fat, you know, emperor has no clothes situation, but like, imagine someone is getting overweight out of like your friend group. Right. And you like might not mention it, but imagine now there's, you know, billboards everywhere and everyone coming up to you being like, yo, just do not mention the weight. Like, and then everyone's going and be like, he's skinnier than ever. And then there's like, you know, every celebrity is like talking about how skinny he is. You're just like, there's so much value in just being like, Hey, do I have to be the only one that says it? This guy got fat. Like, you know what I mean? All of a sudden that's so funny. So there's a lot of stuff where they forced your hand by just like the consensus being so off on topics. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, yeah, no. And, and it's okay. So, so, uh, my, my buddy, Sam Tripoli, uh, I like uh, for, Sam's the best. Yeah. Uh, said for a one very long, Oh dude, he's fucking great. He's, he's an was, awesome guy, man. Um, that, have you ever checked out the union of the unwanted? It's a thing that he does with uh, Charlie Robinson and Ricky. He has so many podcasts. I know. It, I, I did it, Broken Simulation. And it's I every. Podcast it's now. every other. It's every other Monday. Um, it's it's fucking wild, dude. It's just a huge panel. Uh, there's a bunch of us, and then uh, a couple of guests, and it's just it, it's hectic. But um, but cool. Sam said for a very long time that uh, people would rather uh, 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 be right then do right and, and so if the group consensus is saying i would even say right, i would even go one do. above that it's like people don't want people want would rather be comfortable than right than than oh, do yeah. right you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like I, I i don't even believe that like you know obviously people want to pretend like some degree want to be right but it's like they don't even really want to be right they just want to you know be uh like they don't want to most people aren't designed to shake the boat like people want to be accepted yeah. 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 No, that's that's perfectly fair. It is the, the go along to get along thing is going to is what really swept all of of, you know, lockdown and mask and pushing shots on kids and all that well, kind of stuff. It was like, yeah, because you look at all these things like equilibriums where you go, where's the point that you would uh, shake the boat or whatever? And it's like, I think this found it for a lot of people because i think there is a lot of people where they it did go too far where everyone's like all right enough of this canadian truckers getting robbed of their money <laughs> that's ridiculous. really did yeah, it for I mean, a lot of people that whole thing were and and i know that we may be speaking ill of your country of origin but it's a fucking <laughs> i have no state. allegiance to canada it's it's a fucking <laughs> police state and and your prime minister blackface up there is pretty freaking crazy man yeah, he, he, the ESGs are coming up there too as well. So forget about the farmers are going to go crazy once they digital start ID. Didn't oh, yeah. they announce? Oh, yeah, just, yeah it oh, is. Well, you need to get the app. You can't even if you, you have can't. your papers. You need the app. So. Yeah, I, I I feel like there is, like there's two types of messages, and and sometimes there's like the type of person that I'll worry about me, like in the sense that like. When, I know a million people that in like actual my friends who are kind of successful and that sort of stuff where it's like 
they thought this stuff was lame, but at the same time, they're like, yeah, but I'm not following any of it. Like, you know, if I, when I went back to Toronto, if people wanted to party, they had spots, they had like, it, it was annoying, you know, but for, uh, if you, if you didn't kind of weren't able to figure it out, but there's some degree of like, yeah, there's people that were, oh, let me fight this. But then there was a lot of people that were just like, if you look at it, you're like, oh, these lockdowns are crazy. It's kind of the way that if you said like prohibition to certain people, they'd be like, can you believe it's illegal to drink? Everyone's like, yeah, I've been drinking every night for the last like two weeks. It doesn't affect me. So for yeah. like half the people, it was one and half the people, it was for other, for the other. But there's, I, I do feel like from a personal level, there's always a way that like you can win i guess that's kind of like where i was going with that message because to some degree i'm like for your average person it is you know there is one message that's like fight up you know stand up and like fight and all this stuff but then there's the other thing of like yo you can like beat this thing you know what i mean there's always a way for you to like personally like the, the idea that people aren't gonna come save you you know what i mean like you need to figure out how to how to uh have like a bulletproof life before you start worrying about other people's lives Wow. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. You know, Steve had just mentioned Sam. You know, he's a big inspiration for Steve when he started the show. You know, I was kind of uh, close with a lot of comedians like with Graham Elwood, Ron Pacone, and Jimmy Dore, of course, as well. Uh, you know, these guys, they started as comedians, and now they've kind of found themselves in this interesting space. I'm curious because when I see your comedy, I see the genius in it. I really do. I think it's just so smart. It makes you think. It makes you laugh. Uh, and then sometimes when you get deep into Thanks, it, you maybe, maybe make might make you want to cry, knowing that we're living in this kind of COVID kind of crazy world where everything has changed. Do you see yourself evolving into maybe doing more shows, a little bit more like rooted like this, and then kind of bleeding into comedy, to have the comedy bleed in as vice versa, that you're out there just strictly just doing the comedy and the tours? It's hard to say where you're going to end up, but... Um... I, I think that like you try to do an inventory of your actual personality because it's so easy to kind of look around and be like, oh, this thing's popping off and there's energy here and there's always, you know, formats to chase. Right. But then and I'm, I'm bad at this, by the way, I don't do this enough, but I try to. I was trying to do this like yesterday, be like. Like one of the things is like streaming, for example, right? Like there's a lot of like guys that are kind of doing five hours of streaming a day and like kind of reacting to videos, right? Yeah. And then I was kind of like, wait, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't want to stream on my computer. Like I'm not like a computer guy. I'm not specifically into like computer culture like that. I would like to make, you know, I've been making videos for the last 20 years. That was like my favorite thing. I like doing stand up. I like to some degree. So trying to find the intersection of like what you like doing and the formats are always going to change. And I think that once in a while, like sketch comedy was, you know, kind of doing well, I think it'll probably fade and there'll be, you know, then I've been sort of, I'm do, I do enough things like stand up as, uh, and street interviews. Like I've noticed that the, the kind of my, uh, like a, uh, irreverent, street interview stuff has sort of risen in views and maybe some of the more topical stuff has sort of lowered in views but you always try to have enough stuff to uh sell tickets on the road or to yeah. you know have your podcast grow and stuff like that and i don't have it all figured out but yeah. i try to remember to some degree what i do actually want to do so i don't want to do a daily uh, you know, yeah. like you don't have a desire to say more, stream. though. Like, because like, I mean, have you had a situation when you're doing like one of your comedy sketches out and about, and then after you're done having it, you have a serious conversation with somebody off to the side? Well, I have a I have a podcast that I already do that. So I have a podcast called The Boys Cast, and we do three hours a week. I didn't know and, about that. So <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fairly popular podcast, and like it, that it, is, it, it is it, the uh, about how much stuff I have to say when I was <laughs> I've been thinking about it. Like I try to th collect all my things I have to say for the week, and you know, three hours is a lot. So yeah. I mean, and especially when you go an hour special, you're like, you take all of the things that you've thought, and then you're like, what are the best things that I've, you know, my best insights? And I try, you try to have a special where you're like, you know what? I've taken uh, all of this stuff I was thinking about, and I've summarized it into these, you know, great sentences or quotes. And I, I like that. Like whenever I hear like a good quote that sort of summarized something perfectly, you're like, man, that's such a, 
You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, I yeah. think that's what a lot of times comedy and maybe what I'm best at and why the videos are good is I think that sometimes one of my best things is like taking like a conversation and summarizing it into this like little thing as opposed to just like having something to say about everything, even though I maybe can like a a exist in that world. So I'm like, I, I, I think that sometimes maybe if I was just to be a, hey, I'm gonna stream for three hours and have something to say about everything, may I think I could do it, but I think there'll be other people that are at an advantage over me. Like think about like a Alex Jones or even like Tim Dillon type of guy that's like a stream of consciousness, like I'll talk forever. That's actually not really how I operate. Like I more have uh, these specific things that I've been thinking about forever that I think I have an insight. So maybe I talk for whatever amount of time, but hopefully I, every time I do a podcast, I'm like, I try to every week have like three, three things that I think that are like a good way to describe that. And a lot of them are on just like man, woman dynamics where it's like this conversation that everyone's having. I'm like, this is like my, uh, distilled. Ver so I might, uh, so, so my point was that I don't know if I want, I'm like suited to necessarily be like a four hours a day, like reaction streamer or podcaster, but I think, uh, in like a certain setting I am. So yeah, it's hard to know exactly where you would go, but I, I think that there's, I've spent like the last 20 years of my life making videos in the last like 15 or, you know, 12 to 15 doing stand up comedy. So I think that that is like a thing that I'm like uniquely good at with the, the the mix of all of my things combined. So I there's always going to be like a version that suits you, but there's the world in the industry does change. So I try to not like chase it and remember like what do you actually want to do? Because as soon as you like step away from the center of what I like to do, I feel like that's when things in your life start to fall apart. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. totally fair. It is. Oh shit, I forgot. Um, so when there's a, a new guest on, on the show, this is something we started doing uh, a few months ago. Um, we we asked them. There's a, a specific thing that people do in uh, elder care and hospice where they have the dementia patients will have a playlist, and it's like it's what will allow them some memory recall and kind of help like bring them back into a, a spot where they have more lucidity and can at least like recall, you know, those moments really yeah, well. Yeah. What Ryan Long is your dementia memory recall playlist? Maybe or like a couple of songs on it. Just, you know. Well, maybe Rancid Out Come the Walls is an album. Okay. Like I think that okay. would I think that would perk you up if I was like in the uh, be like, "All oh, right, yeah, yeah." First first three <laughs> first three bars a uh, Maxwell murder and then you're like, "Oh, that's <laughs> right. I did. I okay, okay." You know, and okay. then I uh, think that probably something in my opinion that some of the the probably ones that would perk your brain up the least is the ones that were the least like melody, like, like a band, like third eye blind, I feel like would be those uh, melodies would be more like embedded in your bones than like a rage against the machine, which is cool. But I bet you it's not accessing the brain the same way because of the like structure of the music. I feel like you could do that with sublime too. music, right? I do. I think Subl do yeah, yeah. Certain yeah. sublime songs, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I bet you, like those big, like sugary melodies. I bet uh -huh. you are embedded into your psyche in a different way than like yeah. something that's like cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do. You could do it with a lot of Motown. Throw some Sam and Dave at people. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of those songs are the the ones that uh, hype people up. Yeah, because they were like some of those like sugary melodies. They're almost melodies and you know, chord progressions that already existed. And then that band just use them too. And I think that there's, there's probably like 10 of those, you know, probably 10 specific like chord progression, melody combinations that are like 80 famous songs are the same one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just one, four or fives. And I bet you there's something specific, something uh, unique about those progressions that like how it interacts with the brain, as opposed to like the weird ones where it was like a cool song, but you go, this didn't have like a, they didn't throw to the A minor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like universal uh, chord progressions that I bet you have an actual like historical effect on you. <laughs> Music to keep you inside the matrix. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have an opinion on the 440 versus 432 hertz? No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Do you think? 
That's what I guess it goes back to the way, like, I've, I know a lot of uh, the, like, red pill guys. That's been the, it's a lot of talk about the Matrix. And, like, some of my friends, I know this guy, Sneeko, he's like a buddy of mine. And they're like, he's like, I'm uh, really into that stuff right now. But I, 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 I've been thinking a lot lately about that stuff where it's like, there's like two, the Matrix stuff where you're just like, yeah, there's this, like, Matrix. And then one, like the real off the grid matrix is I moved to you know the middle of nowhere. Is it more like is more outside the matrix? I moved to the middle of nowhere. I unplugged. Like I don't have a job, so the government can't find me. Like is that the real on the matrix guy out of the matrix guy, or is the real out of the matrix guy the guy that's on the internet like pointing it out to everyone? So as a guy who has spent a significant number of years in various off-grid living situations and would like to return to one, I would like to die fishing off of my fucking deck, man. I would like just, you know, like whatever I got to do to like get to a spot to where I'm left the fuck alone. And when I croak, I'm like in a rock and chairs. I'm going to do a fishing pole. This is on my own property. Like, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. It is. Um, but but until then, I, I am one of the people on the internet. I, I think it's a out. little of column A and I, B, by the way. Um, yeah. I do know that that you, this is something you can do for yourself if you ever get weird enough or bored enough to do it. And that's the the cymatic experiments with water and frequency. We can What's that? we can well. I, uh, water is affected by frequency. And it yeah. has different, you know, different like moods that that it gets into. So you can play music at 440 and it will react one way and then compare it to how it reacts with mood. And it's a more negative mood vibrationally of the water where it is as how are you saying how, what does that mean that you said it's more negative? Uh, well, that's the I can't remember the guy's the professor's name that did the original cymatic experiment. It, it, maybe somebody in the chat can. Uh, that sounds like a value judgment that the water's more negative well, it, right now. <laughs> it, so, well, what they did was they what they did was they <laughs> said yeah, yeah. angry words, angry things at the water. They you know like they I liked it better. Did, and uh, and so the pattern that the water made based on that versus the pattern that the water made when they said nice things or played nice don't or you know less discordant things, uh, and that's how they that's how they based it wa was off of that. So the same reactionary patterns show up at 440 and 432. Yeah, um, and if you just just stripping away any of the the conspiracy from it or any of the matrix stuff from it human beings react to frequency and vibration and magnetism and things like that just on, on a basic chemical level you know so i mean that's yeah yeah of course we're i know we're, it's interesting to try to hack your own you know what i mean when you start to like that's when you know i, I like a lot of times when you start to be like yo like, uh, humans are so like simple and stupid including myself where when you find yourself in a bad mood and you have like okay if i do this it's this and like you know what i mean and you know how to like hack your own energy it starts to like feel like you know this is weird like what is this well and in one aspect you can be like holy shit i finally have some tools to help me through my bullshit and on the yeah. other hand you can be like holy crap i figured this out and i am not the brightest monkey in the barrel other people have probably figured this out way before me and that's mm -hmm. why i bought those shoes last year you know or like what the fuck ever yeah uh, yeah of course uh, and then we're a heavily propagandized nation so that's why we we do the show here where it's a lot of media deconstruction and then conversations with you know fucking people who but especially would like to save comedy we're gonna have josh denny in here next week too uh because he's coming through i think him and kumia are coming through vegas really soon oh really nice uh, so we're and, and we're at least getting josh in and it would be nice to get Anthony Cumia in, but I don't know if we're going to be able to or not. When is Skankfest, by the way? And and what exactly? Because I want to hear what Ryan has to say. What actually is Skankfest? Somebody asked inside the chat. Is it just oh. a bunch of uh, you know? I'm going to try to do my attempt at comedy over here. Is it just a bunch of uh, dudes yelling about the the fact that women are a different species and can't deal with it, so they got to complain about it out loud? 
kind of thing. No, it's you know it's not whores. accepting it's that just, women are from a, Venus it's a and big men have a bucket penis of whores. kind of thing, like shit like that. You know, yeah. The comedy that I'm, you know, they're like the, the, my criticism. Even though he's a brilliant, he was genius, Patrice O'Neill. It's still at the end of the day, I would say, dude, you know, like come on, you know, like. You chose to be with a stupid girl who's going to complain about all this stuff because you were maybe happy did. that His she was hot. Was fantastic, and so he made a point to tell you. About I, it. yeah. I'm so just, your 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 uh like criticism of guys like that that are just it's all complaining about women is you kind of take it as like you chose kind the wrong of like one. My comedy of bagging on them the way they bag on everybody. But what is the what is the criti is the criticism like? Oh, you guys like yeah for you because you chose the wrong girl. <laughs> kind of like, 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 no, like the things that I laugh about is that it's like some of the comedy and we were talking about like with Patrice O'Neill and I was like, so what, dude? Like, yeah, I mean, like women are a different species and stuff. And I get it in comedy. Like when you point out the differences that are so funny and what. Well, no, the, the reason is the differences are uh, the reason why that, like, in my opinion, is funny is like because they're you're not they're like the common conceptions wrong so he's saying stuff that is like a, a lot of these people uh i mean hopefully when it's best is you're like you're saying like come on let's be honest this is what's actually happening here and you're not supposed to, it's like the consensus doesn't think that so if everyone says like if you go let's be honest you know girls have got longer hair than guys right like we got to say it like everyone agrees with that so there's no point but if you're if you kind of say like you know something that uh you're not supposed to like if if you say I don't know what would be like an aggressive one if your bit is, I mean, in his part, like, let's say a bit where it's like, come on, we can't sexually harass you a little bit. Like, you're not like shit like that. The harassment day thing. That is a, a yeah. 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 yeah but I, to me, to me a lot, I actually gravitate a lot more towards girl guy stuff. Cause like at the end of the day, you know, how people interact with like the government and politics pales in comparison to like how much time you spend with whoever you're dating like that is really the crux of most people's lives like those dynamics you know what i mean so it's like you know i like louis said he goes you know the racism thing was like we we screwed that up like if you go to a thousand years from now though there probably won't be racism or whatever right but like sexism isn't going no like guys and girls being mad at each other that's going to be ten thousand years ago in a pod on a some other planet like some guy being like oh my fucking white you know what i mean like that's always gonna yeah, exist yeah, yeah. so i think a lot of issues that are like masculine feminine man woman uh are are, are being pre like looked at like you sometimes you'll see conservatives it, it kind of drives me nuts where they'll be like something will happen that will be like and they'll be like this is the left like look at the left and you'll be like you mean girls like that's not the left that's women you know what i mean it, so the the uh, and, and i i do want to make this perfectly clear because there is you know, like we'll we'll talk about like political shit in the context of why it why it was already something that that like politicians are just mules they're they're like well they're like i agree yeah dude they, they're, they're like, literally cheerleaders for the gen the consensus of their base the this is what they are they're or they're, they're whores and like all whores they have pimps right it's it's not their money that we pay them to to have them fuck us because that's what you do with the whore. The whore, you don't fuck the whore. The whore is really fucking you. You're paying the whore. The whore is fucking you. So we're giving them our money. Sometimes every couple of years we get to pick a different whore, right? Or we think we're picking a different whore. But it's just pimps throwing a couple of different whores out onto the street for us to give our money to. Maybe try out a new one, see what tricks they have. But at the end of the day, the, we have no relationship with the pimp none whatsoever we're just the john so what we do on the yeah show, that's a good way to put it we try to focus on who the pimps are instead of worrying about what little like street fights the whores are doing to distract everybody yeah no it is it is pretty simple to be a politician because you're just like like if this was any other job for them uh, i guess some commentators could do this too or whatever but like if you're like 
AOC or DeSantis. Like to me, that there's no job easier. You go, what did like the people? What did left wing people trend on Twitter today? Okay, I'll go say what they think. Exactly. Like, DeSantis is like, oh, okay, we we're mad about uh, the what they're teaching the kids now. Okay, I'm gonna go do a speech about how that's bad. It's like legitimately the easiest job in the world, kind of in some ways. Yeah, I'm doing a show later on today. We're talking elections, and we're going after DeSantis because of what he just recently did. But you're right; he like went to Twitter, looked, saw That's the red exactly thing, what he did, and he yeah. went right out and he used it in a new policy as far as elections. And he went after arresting, con uh, going after convicts, felons who didn't have the right to vote. Twenty of them. And that's the red meat, you know, towards his base in Florida, because a lot of people are saying people shouldn't vote who don't have the right to vote. So he's feeding that red meat base of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Twitter. Yeah. And it's and always it's not, the, us. It's not helping us. No, it's, it's never. The, yeah. That's why I said both both the left and the right. Like, I agree with them, like, you know, certain things of both. And you go, the ones, it, but it's you, it's like, it's uh, useless. That's why I'm like, don't you, you there's, uh, I feel like uh, the only thing to do is like focus on individualism or whatever, because like both of the things that they care the most about and will actually get passed, like, will be the ones that I don't like on both sides. Like, they'll only fight for the things you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'll, yeah. You know what I mean? And so I, I, that's uh, you know uh, they'll use whatever power that like uh, well, that's to keep they us in a perpetual fight. state of fighting. You know what uh, I'm saying? Because that's the shit that just goes back and forth. It doesn't solve the problems. And that's I think why that, we need that shit. I, this is where I'm like I I sometimes I I'm, I'm like you know I'm I've kind of am like a markets guy to some degree. Like I so maybe to some degree I I think I lean more towards that like is natural. Like, you're like, that's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I don't always know if it's, yeah, yeah, to keep us fighting as much as, like, that does keep you fighting and that is, like, a natural progression of how things work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're, like, it kind of uh, is, like, you know, it's easier for the conservatives to, like, get a, a to win on abortion or it's easy for conservatives to get, like, some win on LGBT things that don't matter than it is for any of them to do anything that is hard to do. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm someone who doesn't think that we should have a, a state at all. Um, ooh, but, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having said that, uh, uh, the, if you had to like, if you had to throw a, a, a pin at it, it would be like you know, market anarchist kind of thing, market agorist kind of thing, uh, and I don't, I don't think that we're going to stop. I don't want to stop people from being people. I don't want to stop people from engaging in any kind of trade. I don't want to stop people from, you know, trying to expand on their ideas and grow. I just happen to think that 99% of the problems that we have in doing so are because of a centralized power structure and a bureaucracy that engages in a monopoly on violence in order to extort and, you know, rob people and throw mm -hmm. them in prison if they mm -hmm. don't allow that state to expand um and, and it's i do think that we're on like we're on the edge right now especially after the last several years especially with all of the advances that we've made in like direct person-to-person -person communication direct interaction where where uh comedians have basically eliminated the industry from their ability to interact your ability to interact with people with our ability to interact with people and to connect all sorts of of different uh individuals with all sorts of different thoughts together at the same time we don't need to do that through the mechanisms that have traditionally got in the way we've already have kind of a counter economy thing going on we already have parallel structures to what comedy clubs are to what news stations are to what magazines are to what you know work is in general so the thing that we need to do then is kind of talk about this a little bit more and just take the next couple of steps to remove the reliance on yeah, how central banks influence the rest of our lives maybe yeah i mean yeah. uh that makes 
to some degree sense. Yeah, there, you're right, though. There is. I mean, I think that I, I uh, maybe that was like some of that was a little like I don't know what you're talking about. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to come back. I do, I, I do do this for three hours a day. So. Why don't we go back to explaining what Skank does before I went up? Oh, wow. I was nodding along, but I was like, I was like, I was like, yeah, along, I, was like, I was like, yeah, I think like that makes sense that, you know, there is like parallel economies. And, but I'm like, I don't like, I, 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 and you're like the central bank thing. I think that I agree that the, that's, the, but I'm like, I maybe, uh, I don't know if like the, how, the, how are those two related? Um, well, uh, like how is the, like the industry part related to the, the banking part? Because still the, the way that people get captured or pulled back into whatever sort of, um, you know, narrative management structure that that keeps people comfortable i guess uh and unaware um it, is predominantly money it's usually right. how it works so as long as you're uh as long as you're still you know both feet in the the either fiat or c soon to be central bank digital currency system the, are they going to take are they going to like uh it's, it's happening it's, all over the world trying man. to do it seems. it's happening yeah. all over the world and they're saying here by 2025 they want it that's what uh that's what the fed said that's what janet yellen has said that's what the international monetary fund it almost said. seemed like yeah you go how could they not it was almost like naive <laughs> to be like yeah we'll have our own currency but i don't know maybe i'm wrong like maybe it is set up in a way that they can't stop it or something but to some degree it's like everyone's like yeah we'll beat the fed and you're like no you won't <laughs> well i mean it really is have you ever read the creature from jekyll island no okay it is an incredible it's book short read, about right? how yeah about how the federal reserve was was created the the meeting that sparked the creation of the federal reserve it's fantastic i highly recommend it um I think I have some knowledge of that. I think I like kind of do have uh, like a general kind of. I think I, I I went to, not that like you learn anything there, but like the I I went to like university for economics and I was like wow. fairly kind of into this stuff when I was like really young. Mm -hmm. So like I mean that is like college is half the people become like extreme libertarians and half the people become like <laughs> actual communists like those are, <laughs> right those are and i was what happened to you <laughs> yeah I, I mean i was i was like kind of pretty much going through like a like a getting into all this stuff phase when i was like in 18. um now i'm like i don't know if i i kind of like agree with some things of everyone but like i do know to some degree, like I was pretty into the Federal Reserve and stuff when I was like 19. <laughs> I nice. mean, there's just there's it's it's hard to argue that there's a relatively small number of banking institutions that have an outsized influence over not just Western domestic policy, but Western foreign policy in the way that like a handful of uh uh, arms manufacturers always happen to supply the next secretary of defense or the next secretary of state for the U.S. And it's just a, a nice little. Yeah, little yeah, for sure. I, I guess my problem is not my problem. Sorry. But like man. where I got to with a lot of that stuff is like I, I remember like I think like arguing, you know, communism versus like libertarian stuff or whatever feels uh -huh. like you're just like. It's just basically the same as arguing, you know, who would win in like two Marvel universes because you're like, none of this is going to happen. Yes. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's like completely uh, uh, intellectual argument. Whereas I guess, in, so like the, the idea that, you know, the state's not going to exist, you're like, I don't know, it's just, that's not happening. So yeah. I get, yeah, I'm you like, I mean, obviously, I'm sure most. In, so it becomes almost like a that argument. I, I maybe like have spent less time like thinking about it and the implications of it because it's so irrelevant. Whereas I think of kind of maybe socialism and libertarianism as as, as like um, uh, like medicine, where it's like you know 
if, if you look at a society, you go, this society needs like a little bit of redistribution of wealth, or you go, this society needs a little bit of, uh, you know, the shrinking of government. And it maybe depends on where you're looking and what period of time. Like, they're, yeah. if everyone thinks they're like, they're like utopias and in, in, in reality there it's like this constant uh back and forth that's never over and they're both like tools and mm -hmm. and potential yeah. medicine like no one would agree that like you know if you had a society where you know 80 people had infinite you know a uh, billion dollars and every single other person had one dollar everyone would say like yeah let's those people need to get together and redistribute that wealth right so i think there's a point where everyone would agree that someone needs socialism and there's a point where everyone would agree that it needs more uh, libertarianism so you just made the ears perk up of the guy in the chat who actually started the socialist libertarian caucus within the libertarian party so, okay. <laughs> he's listening and he's like he's probably dc he's like oh my god i love ryan here here i i based on my observation uh for and this is just my my own particular point of view um uh the given you know the set of experiences that i've had through my life i think that, that every marketed ism has failed us miserably and will continue to fail us miserably because they're maybe, what maybe they're being used the wrong way though like that's why because you go they're like oh and none of these you know it's kind of like Imagine picking an emotion where you're like, hey, there's happy, sad, angry, and you're just like, whatever one you say is the best. And you're like, well, they're like, they're meant to be like a broad spectrum of things that kind of like uh, interact to create like a healthy s organism, maybe. Yeah. I, I, and I think that what allows for that is very little centralized control over any particular set of operating steps of that organism yeah well you know i think that Ryan, think there's there there's yeah. a a a a decentralized network within so I, I'm, that's all operating it in sort of cooperation w with itself i'm i'm like i'm i think my genuine genuine like instincts are that like i kind of but when i'm sort of uh going against that you're just like or is like power you know it's like the idea that we'll like decentralize power in reality will remove the government and it's like a vacuum that gets filled with something else you know right 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 well natural i mean it's they they do that's the say power abhors a vacuum right it, yeah it does yeah. so so the idea is to make um make the the profit in peace find the profit motive in peace rather than finding so how do you do that it, well you <laughs> mathematically prove that peace is more profitable and, and then well, is the, the idea step. in the future the you know let's say the blockchains or whatever they're sort of embedded with these like algorithms where you say that obviously Actually, I, I, I actually, uh, you continue and explain. Well, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't have that answer. I'm not going to try and sell that answer. I think that anybody selling that answer is disingenuous. But what I do know is that what is currently working or is what the, the, the systems that we're currently operating under are untenable no matter how they try to to sell it you can't operate a nation on uh you know 60 trillion or 40 trillion dollars of imaginary debt that's backed by you know an imaginary currency backed by an yeah. imaginary currency yeah. that is then only enforced by violence and it doesn't matter who they say the the debt holder is whether it's the u.s government or whether it's all of the other different yeah. governments that have bought up u.s debt or canadian debt or whatever it is that's all enforced at the barrel of the gun and that's not that's not sustainable yeah. people keep saying shit about revolution that just brings you right back to where you start i and, and so i don't know man it's a there's a bunch of broken fucking people i don't think we get to fix any of this shit until we heal ourselves because if we're broken we're giving broken help i don't yeah. I, I to be honest if i was to make an accurate 
like a or an actual prediction like i i don't think it will get fixed like i'm not i think it more is you know america probably this stuff kind of like if this was a stock like they'll be up and down but probably as far as what you're talking about it's like a it'll keep getting a little worse and just like slowly kind of i don't know if there's going to be like any catastrophe but probably you know the idea where it's you know how like it's harder for this generation to make money like i think that that stuff probably does continue to get worse so the idea is to try to uh yourself be someone that can navigate it yeah yeah i, like, I think that's a a great answer too as well because it's not just the financial shit that they're putting the burden on the next generation it's the mental confusion the way they've just you know littered our our children's brains moving forward but i i yeah and you I almost don't want to get caught up in it like you all, honestly yeah. you want to understand that this is all happening but also like and I, that's why i'm like almost a preacher of like realism you know what i mean where it's like it's like yes this is happening you yeah. know like you know like a lot of times there'll be like even with like let's say like uh a fir let's say there was like a situation where someone was like a like a white 18 year old dude or whatever right and there was like some the same way that there has been for other races where they go hey we're like even in comedy you go hey we're doing like this festival circuit like hey we're looking for girls and you know like diversity or whatever right and you're a white guy so you go okay there's, there's 500 white comedians going white dudes going for like two spots and then you know like 80 girls going for like five spots or whatever it is right like let's say it's not in your favor like i think a lot of people get caught up with complaining about that where i'm just like yeah that's the situation like you complaining is not going to help like all, yeah. all you like yeah you shouldn't be like if you're like you need to like rewire your brain to like understand like the reality of like yes that is true if you go you just tried to enter an inter an agency that's like not favorable to you right now okay well, are you going to try to change the like you need to think about that and go yeah that's a bad move for you to be trying to enter that field so you should always be looking for yeah. where uh, makes sense for like you to go and I think that like that sort of uh, expanded out onto everything is like more people need to it would be benefit more people to sort of think like that stop like looking at the world how you think it should be and accept the way it is and just enter into under those you know parameters and those cautions and, and that that is how the th world like that is how markets sort of work right you go like incent people move in their incentives and like you I think a lot of people have done that in a lot of like think about how much things have changed for four years and that's all a function of people being like all right it doesn't make sense for me to do this i'm going to do this you know what i mean uh people are sort of uh so is that impressive acceptance in that way. Then, or is that innovation in the face of uh, not accepting the current status quo i think great people find uh holes like you know what right. i mean it's kind of the way that like even great companies are great i like, think great, great people great... find holes should be a, a t-shirt for boys cast <laughs> i do I all the great like, i feel like yeah. that should be incorporated into into the marketing somehow <laughs> think of the best like philosophers or comedians or whatever it's you like <laughs> you like you like found this like spot that you know no that didn't exist or whatever right so That's i think fantastic. that i think people will always do that like uh so it's i i do have like faith in like uh great people to some we're degree. totally retitling this episode great people great find people holes. great people find 100 you know i think you were on to something though when you did point it out when you were asking that question so what do we do i think that you had the answer and we were talking about it about the libertarian socialist mentality i think that you have to you have to i've always pushed for a mixed economy because we have to take the good things or the things that are worthy of taking from each ideology and leave the bad things behind the recognition is so important and I think that's the solution at the end of the day is that we don't get caught up in any ism, that we look at the things that are like what you said, the analogy about, you know, 80 people owning billions of dollars and everybody else owning nothing. We understand that's an issue right now. Redistribution of wealth or how wealth is distrib distributed, mainly at the end of the day, how resources are distributed. That's the most important thing. But I do think you have the answer and it is the top of the hour. So I don't want to keep you long how much oh, time yeah, you yeah, have yeah. and and yeah, i also I have a, a chance but yeah to, exactly to what you just said because i i put well, a he's bad on uh, tour with a bunch of other stuff and we never actually talked yeah, about what the yeah. comedy festival is e exactly too, so. okay so <laughs> i'll <t> <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming, Ryan, let me tell you. we appreciate it buddy
<laughs> would also like to. I'm going to tell you my dates, but Skankfest. There's a po there's a, a popular podcast in New York called Legion of Skanks, and uh, there's this guy Louis Gomez. He has a uh, uh, like a a, a, a uh, like a podcast network in New Our York. Our dog's named after him, by the way. No, the he's named Gomez. after Gomez from the Adams family. Oh. So why did you bring up Louis J. Gomez? Right, because he, he has a he has a I podcast said, called Legion of Skanks, and it's their festival. Yeah, and I said when Louis J. Gomez laughs, he kind of looks like a pit bull when they smile, and so there's an. It, 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 but I mean, okay. I, that's true of most bald I, guys. I yeah yeah. I drew the wrong analogy. Yeah. Please continue, Ryan. Before I so no, no. There's like there. Honestly, there. What I, I I let you when you were t uh, hypothesizing about why it's called the Skank Fest. I I maybe could have interjected and just be like, it's the name of the guy's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, you let me just go and hang myself, pal. I appreciate it. Welcome to the fucking show. Hell yeah, dude. you're perfect for anarchy in the you morning. Can, you can stay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I'm a, I have a podcast called The Boys Cast, um, and me and uh, Danny Polishuk, like, we kind of go through, like, funny articles and, like, Reddits and stuff like that, and obviously, like, talk about, it, like, whatever's going on, but the main thing is if, like, your audience wants to come out, I'm, I'm, we've been doing on tour, it's like we've been selling out a lot of the shows, and it's been pretty cool, so that's been a lot of what I've been focusing on, In every city, I've been bringing, like, my camera guy, and we've been filming stuff at, like, sketches and stuff in every city, so it's like, to some degree, that's, like, a life that I'm starting to be, like, this is cool. Like I'm going on two or three, four days a week. Do my podcast when I'm back and that stuff. Do my editing. Like I have a couple editors working for me. I'm filming stuff every day on tour, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, I'm what's starting your favorite to sketch. By the, by the way, the one that you've done. Like, what's been your favorite? I mean, I'm trying to think about. They're always one ones that no favorite. one likes, but yeah. I think that for me, the ones that for some reason make me really laugh the most are. I, I probably the music ones when I did like the like I did this band that was like a, a like this like feminist uh, band and they did like songs for COVID and songs for women and like stuff like that and th I think that I do I think sketches like that are really fun uh, probably my two that I think are the funniest that both bombed or was it, it was a stunt man it was with the guy from Are You Garbage and it's this stunt man that was. Um, He's doing the he's in a stuntman outfit and he's performing the stunt of asking a girl that he works with on a date. <laughs> it's like it goes south. And then there's another one where I did. Uh, there's like guys who are doing. Um, they had they they used to be like in a fat suit franchise and they were like apologizing because it was fat phobic and they're like actors and they're very sad about it and i actually got fat makeup done and me, me and tanny got like a makeup artist to make us kind of dress up like the clumps and the we the just like making what those uh what the old what the old videos were we kind of showed clips of what their old fat suit franchise videos were so there's a few like that where I think the people that like me agree where everyone was saying like, this is the best or whatever, but it's just too like esoteric to like, you know, the stuff that goes viral is generally like one very distinct point that you kind of like made right. really good. Whereas some of that stuff that's yeah. like, sometimes I'll click with one weird one like that, but less but you so. Do, you do the stuff that goes viral so that you can put out the weird shit, shit that makes yeah. you happy i yeah, think that's right? true yeah i mean it's a you know you, or it's you, like there there's if you, if you rem remove me from it like i think you just want to make the stuff that makes you the happy the most because like if you get away from that i think everything will start to suck if you if you leave like what you think is funny but there is that you have those big ones that like go viral and stuff like that but then you have those ones where it's like that's what someone sees and they're like oh this guy's my favorite comedian now you, I think you some of that stuff makes you people's like favorite. You yeah. have one line in the information one. Yeah, which yeah, really yeah. just hit home when you were like, you were on the phone. You're like, wait, what about the people who put stuff out there that were taken down because it wasn't true, but now it's true? We're still not going to let them back on, right? You're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. That was like so <laughs> funny because it was true because we have been demonetized for shit we said two years ago. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then now you can say <laughs> the CDC releasing their new guidelines. I was like, holy shit like guys <laughs> like you suspended me from this shit you've taken me down like why you know and that what you said it was funny but it hit home so much the will smith one were you guys in the studio just waiting for a moment because that no, shit, i, I re-released that what well i i did one that day that i did uh 
uh, how you shouldn't be making fun of people's bald wives joke. I did like a, you know, comedy goes too far when you make fun of people's bald wives. But the one where it was the four guys in the studio yeah, that yeah. banged so his wife. Yeah, like came out I, 30 seconds after the smack. Yeah, because I made that a month ago because I was, I'd been no. like kind of talking about all this stuff and I did that sketch a month ago and really? then went. Yeah, yeah, and then I well, just re-released it when this happened. Do, yeah, because it didn't. It, it was I don't. No, but I released it, it a month ago. Wrong CIA. There wasn't really. No, no, no. It, it had already come out. It was already like public. I thought yeah. that it just came out right after. I thought it was like a no. bunch of guys waiting in the studio. The smack happened, and then thirty minutes later, here comes a video, and I was just like. Fucking yeah. Ryan Long was genius. He was in the studio. I'll tell you what, though, that was a perfect example of what you said. That was one of the videos that I like was really making me laugh. Like just the idea of the four yeah, guys dude. that a painter wife being like, just and they're so like, dude. There's uh, that was it was four guys that big Will Smith's wife saying saying that they hilarious. Yeah, he's so good. Just being like. In this counter, like, is that oak? Like the counter of your in your wife's house as you're banging her, but like. So that that made, and that did okay, but to be oh. honest, it like went viral. Like of people getting mad at me, like Will Smith stands were like pissed. You know, they were like, you know, this has crossed the line, and a lot of like the black community like doesn't like oh, like a white God. guy kind of like making fun of black people. So they were I like, I can't believe that. Yeah, I'm so that fucking duped right now because I feel like the comic <laughs> the comic book the comic book of life just gave it to you. Like that was like perfect that that happened. I mean, that video I watched that video maybe twenty times. After the smack, <laughs> while shit was going on, and I was laughing hysterically, going, "This guy's a fucking genius." He was there waiting for uh, that. Oh, sorry to burst that. Fucking, uh, the premise is fucking fantastic, though. Yeah, really sorry wow. to burst that bubble. But whenever something like really big happens, if you already made a video kind of about that, I think it's smart to just re-release it. Heck that was yeah, great. that was Heck great. Yeah. yeah. It did work. Like that video probably had like six hundred thousand views across platforms, and now it has like seven million across platforms. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Ryan, oh, you got to get out of here, or uh, you yeah, yeah. Got, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go. I got, I, I got it. Uh, we're actually shooting today in like about an hour or so. But awesome. Yeah, um, thanks for having well, me on, guys. I'm glad we made it work. Maybe we'll do it again in the future. Heck yeah, and yeah, uh, let let us know if you have a a free hour or so while you're through because we're literally 15 in Vegas. minutes from 15 you guys are 15 minutes, minutes from where the to be honest yeah. you guys should try to like set up like I, I think if you talk to sam he might tell you this too like you should try to set up like something near the skank fest because i'll just say last year everyone went there and i kind of had all these ideas like oh there was some show off that I'll, like show uh that was off the trail that i'll do and then there was like a podcast and then right, no right. one left the premises because right, right. you know everyone you know is right there and people set up like podcasts in their hotel rooms and it's like everyone's like oh yeah i was gonna drive 20 minutes to go do this other thing and you're just like yeah i'm, I'm not doing that like it, it's like this you know, if you ever been to like a music festival and then no, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, I'll do this thing 20 minutes away. Like you nah, won't. You're not going to yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. anyone who was like good at getting interviews and stuff, they kind of set up like on the premises. If there's a way to like be around there. Cause that yeah. I did lots of that. Some guy being like, Hey, can you walk over there and go do my podcast? I did a lot of that, but like actually getting in like an Uber to leave, I, I probably won't do that. Right. Right. Fair. Does Skank fair, Fest fair. have like what they had at freedom fest. Like a bunch it's of at notoriety. It's, it's at notoriety. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I the people that, that we're like partners with on this place had a, a comedy show at Notoriety for like seven months. They're going to have a different venue going forward, but um, we're way fucking familiar with where the, the where yeah. Skank Fest is going to be. When's the date? And Brett was talking about having yeah. a podcast oh, like, in there, the yeah. building yeah. at. Yeah. Do you know Brett Ernst? I, I know him. Uh, we actually haven't met in person, but we've talked a lot on the Internet and I, I really like him. We were, we were friends from back home, so it's like – it's kind of weird where I'm at right now with doing this here, and it's it's somehow like there's a big – a merger with comedians, so it's been like – Yeah, you know, yeah. This guy, he's a comedian fan, you know. Uh, I'm a, I'm so. a fan of the game. He is. He really is. So it's it's been, awesome. it's been magical. No, Brent, Brent, Brent Durst is really funny, and uh, it seems like his um, uh, like last special like did really well for him too. Yeah. It, it sucks sometimes too, because when he's talking about those moments of like really like you know heartbreak and everything, it's like I was with him sometimes in those fucking strip clubs. No as, you way. know, like, I'm all emotionally <laughs> hurt hitting on a freaking stripper, and Brett's going, "Hey man, dude, come on, hey, it's not, it's not gonna work." That's hilarious. So it's like, you know, yeah. good <laughs> That's stuff. That's great. Man. Yeah, because he's right, in right. Vegas too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's no, we about. went and saw him. Yeah. What? 
last week, week yeah. before, or something like that. He he came into the studio and we got a warning from our landlord for being too loud. The so land, yeah, the landlady's so- really. Local building oh, yeah. is, the, is literally right there and it's still like we we got shit up and it's still it's you know come on popcorn yeah. ceiling so will you okay brett is a very animated individual and, and so i'm sitting in the middle of these two freaking guineas and uh and like they're you know they're talking over me and uh and i have a tendency to make people who have a different viewpoint than me incredibly upset just by talking like this just just with this voice uh and and so that happened and brett got incredibly animated and then like like uh like an italian landlady getting persecuted in the 50s, for being italian you know uh she's banging on the wall well she's she's a wop too. she's italian too yeah. so you know i made yeah. her some pasta azul i brought it to her the next day said sorry everything's okay <laughs> the way things work uh shit ryan long everybody thank you very much man please do yeah. uh uh come by again uh have, rock, have a fantastic brother. time all right thanks for playing my videos and stuff guys and yeah maybe i'll see you in uh and i guess it's can November. i get that ukraine t-shirt that you had uh what was the one uh oh ukraine for life <laughs> With L Y F E, right? Is that how you spelt it? Possibly. I actually, I, so. I have. A, I actually, that was one of my things I need to do. Is like I have a, a costume shelf that's like two closets full, and I was like, I need to sort this out one day because I'll be like, I'll be like looking for something. I'll be like, oh, I'll use uh, sunglasses for a sketch, and I'm like, okay, I gotta dig through stuff for 45 minutes. I end up just buying it again. Yeah. By the way, what's the date for Skank Fest? Just so we know. I don't know. It's it, that, that it's October, like a sold out festival. It's like yeah. a sold out festival. Yeah, 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 like, okay. Whatever. I, I'm not yeah. like I literally agreed to do it and haven't thought much more about it because it's like sold out and right. you know what I mean? right. it's kind of sad. Yeah, but you don't have to do any promo for that. Damn, yeah, it's not it's not my thing. I'm just doing it, yeah. but it's in. Yeah, I yeah. think it's in November. Cool, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Cool. If you're in Edmonton, this are you sold out this weekend? No, like, because I'm doing five shows. I I sell okay. out. When I do like one or two, like a lot, but I, I okay. when you're doing five clubs, it's like fifteen hundred tickets. But I've, have, I've sold a lot Can- though. We have Canada people, and if you're come to yeah Edmonton, Toronto, Los Angeles, I need to sell those tickets, but because those are okay. big places. Edmonton, fifteen hundred tickets, but they're, it's doing good. Like I think it's half sold out. So heck yeah, heck yeah. Well, we we do we have Edmonton people and we have LA people. So yeah, go see Ryan shit, you guys. RyanLongComedy.com. Thanks guys, I appreciate yeah. you. Thank Take you, care, brother. Peace.